Hi, Budget Builds here with Sin, and uh, we're working on our on our paint our paint job today. That's our chocolate brown. We're coming across some uh, bunkers and barricades. Um, what was your uh, favorite thing about this paint job uh, as you went into it? What was your uh, thing you were looking forward to the most? I'm just thinking about the texture I wanted it to be, uh, how worn I wanted it to look. Originally, I wanted uh, I was just going to go with brown and yellow, but you're really good at helping out with the extra colors. So, and I was really pleased with the way it turned out. But the brown over a black primer, it works out really well because it, it allows black to come through um, to give it the look that you really want out of something like this. So the trade-off is, is that you might use a little bit more paint to come across like this to get it as thick as you need it to be a full coat. But the the shadowing effect that, that is caused by the primer you think is, is well worth the, the extra effort. It is. And it's also important to do uh, mostly one direction on your base color. And then you can always come back and texture where you need to. Now I noticed that for the most part you went side to side except for in a few uh, few areas. Was there a reason that you chose side to side uh, rather than up and down? Yes, just thinking about the patchwork of what uh, of the buildings made out of. I imagine they probably didn't care which way the grain was going on any type of uh, medium that they were using or materials they were using to build it. Well, I really like how you went sideways, and I—I I, I mean, I don't even know if you were thinking of it while you were doing it, but wind mostly will kick sand from side to side rather than up and down, and so it looks like like wind has been kicking sand across the front of it in one direction, with okay. the the direction that you went in. It makes it look very authentic. Uh, it's cool that you you weren't even thinking of that, and that's the kind of look that came off. Yeah, I, it surprised me. Appreciate you sharing that. <laughs> now, uh, you're going on the archway that, that was built of the two barricades. Is there anything in particular, like when you're dealing with multi-different materials, not that this has a bunch of different materials, but it does have the wood for the, uh, the support beam. When you're painting different materials, do you have to keep an eye out for anything in particular? As far as, like, painting it? Yeah, like how it picks up your uh, strokes or, like how it absorbs the paint, um, how many layers you may have to put in. Yeah, well, I mean, I do think about those things, but it, for the most part, I guess I'm not really understanding the question very well. Like, uh, I, versus, like, like, if you're painting cardboard, uh, say, versus painting wood or painting styrofoam, oh, yeah. like, is there, like... A different technique of how you brush or do you take into more consideration about how much paint that you put on in that moment yeah you start off working in a little area just to get the feel of the medium that you're working with and usually you'll be able to tell whether or not you need thicker paint if you need multiple coats of paint or if you need to go thinner and also as you layer your stroke your brush strokes will become more light it won't be as heavy and see, now that we're, we're uh, looking at the screen, we see that we're coming across the, the black set. So this is the second set of figures, uh, or terrain pieces. This is the more cityscape as she had, uh, ruined the cityscape as she had mentioned. Um, now what was the biggest difference of doing this coloring rather than the other one? I see that you're not having to use as much paint because you're just coming across lightly. Right, dry brushing, uh, after it's been primed black, dry brushing with gray. And then going back with black and uh, doing the cracks. And depending on the thickness of your paint, this particular paint right here was pretty thick, the orange one. Um, so don't be afraid to use water to thin it down just a little bit if you're working with acrylic. And see, when we had started, when she had started doing this yellow color, it was not the orange originally mixed in with it, was it? It was uh, the yellow, it was just the yellow on its own at first, right? Well, I did a little... The little strip at the top of the percola area. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the, then it wasn't satisfying, so I added in the orange to make it have a, a darker look. You can't really see it. You see it well here, um, but depending on the lighting, you can't really see the orange. And see, you know, when you're trying to layer your colors in or you're trying to think about what color best to go next, start small, do a spot where you plan on doing that color because you can always come back 
either lighten it out or darken it and then as you go it'll look more fluid and see you're it looks like you're penciling in some letters here so when you go to do actual painting letters you pencil in your uh your words that you're going to paint beforehand um is pencil the best tool that you like using for that or yes because it's light enough and it erases pretty good if you make a mistake but you saw me do that <laughs> and see we see you coming through with the same brown that you painted on the base for the other ones uh as your accent on this one if i remember correctly it's just that that two those two tones for the right. most part and so this this one required a lot less paint oh you're making your grids yeah she's using a, a skewer any straight edge will do or if you i mean we didn't think about using the ruler movement based on inches which is perfect so you don't have to do the grid if you don't want to, but if you do like grids, you can do that. And see, you're coming across, she's uh, dry brushing with a little bit of white. Uh, very, Which is your idea. Yeah, very sparingly. I think it looks great. It helps offset. There's so much darkness in that, um, in those uh, terrain pieces already, you know, because they're matte colorings, right? They have, they tend to have a darker hue to them, even though it's like yellow and a teal looking blue. They still came out more matte. Um, right here you want to water down your brown so you can get it drippy looking but not so much where it uh, removes other paint the other layers okay um, unless you just want it there because I scratched in because of the cardboard being shiny uh, the shinier cardboard was easier to scratch into uh, which is the waxy side of the cereal box now, how do you how do you deal with something coming in and taking up your paint space? Enjoy the moment. And just enjoy the moment. You know, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like you're being forced to take a break for a second and enjoy something cute. Yes. And so now you're coming through with a, a light dry brush of the black. It's a wash. It's a heavier wash, and I just start at the edges because, and then as your brush uh, removes some of the heavier paint, you can uh, go into the lighter areas. It just outlines the pieces, makes it look worn, makes and then, it look like it's been, it's been there, it's grimy. It provides some shadow as well, I see, yeah. on the corners, It's you, I can tell. So, I guess, you know, the, there's two avenues you could take, and that's doing lighting or doing shadowing. And the shadowing can bring out light in, in, a, in a piece. There's your uh, letters again. It looks like you're painting last on that side. Yeah. I wonder what you're going to do on the other side. Um, yeah, there's stand. Last stand. It seems like you have something in mind for that. Yeah, it's <laughs> offset for a while. I mean, for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. So we're coming through with the the sand on the base now. Oh, look at that cuteness. Our little flame point. Yeah, enjoy him in this video. He may not be in too many more to come. Uh, we'll, we'll miss him plenty. Now, you didn't put, I, didn't, I saw you didn't put too much glue on that base. I didn't. It was my first time doing sand on a base. Figures are different. I just didn't know how thick I wanted it at first. I, I wanted it to be easier to paint. So on the second one, did you go a little bit thicker with the uh, glue, or was uh, the first time pretty sufficient for what you needed? Uh, the first time was pretty sufficient, but it did give me an idea of the thickness for the other pieces, which... I think I did do uh, some of them a little bit thicker on the edges. I like how you put paint, I mean, uh, not paint, put glue up on the sides so that the, the sand would accumulate there. It looks like the wind has blown right. the sand against it. That was what I was going for. It, and it also adds a nice trim to the piece. Yeah, it uh, hides some of the, uh, the cardboardness of the edges of the base. It really makes it blend and seem like a seamless structure. And so you're coming across, that looks like uh, that, that same, it's a metallic orange, right? Well, it's not metallic, it's just very bright orange. It's, I mean. And you have that chocolate brown mixed with it. Um, it pure, is it's called Pure Orange, it's six, number 628 with folk art acrylic paint. Oh, okay. And I mixed it with the chocolate brown, which is the base primary color for this building. And not to mention, we wanted it to blend in with our matte, our desert desert terrain that we just opened i feel like it matched very well um i think it blends it was just the right coloring you got your pigment on point to match that that matte 
uh, when you're going over the sand, um, how long did you have to wait for it to dry before you could paint it? And how did Actually, you... Actually, well, a good while, because it, I mean, as much paint as you have to put on it, the, it, the thickness it's, itself will require a lot of uh, drying time. So you have to, as you're brushing, do you have to make sure that you don't pull up layers of sand? Yeah, I was a little impatient. I found that out the hard way. You don't want uh, sand getting on your brush and then you're getting in clumping the paint. up and then becoming loose because it's not glued down good. And I think at um, on some point I rubbed some of the sand off unintentionally, but I covered it with paint. Well, you know, it looks really good. Um, I, I enjoyed how it came out. Both sets, the black set and the more orcish looking set. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, just uh, hit subscribe uh, if you don't mind liking our content and uh, leaving a comment. Be much appreciated. Um, more than likely right now, we'll interact with you if you do comment. Uh, just uh, just stay in tune for more. And if you want to participate in our channel, our hashtag is down below. And uh, have a pleasant day.